Efficiencies gained from Power Query can be life-changing, and I am not exaggerating. Power Query can reduce time spent gathering and cleaning data by up to 99%. Imagine if all you had to do was click a single button and all the boring and laborious data gathering and cleaning tasks were done for you. What would you do with all that time? I can think of a few things. Now, nearly all Excel users gather and clean data during some stage of their work. The problem is most Excel users don't know how to use Power Query, and there are three reasons for this. First, they don't know it exists. Second, they're too busy to learn it, probably too busy cleaning data the hard way. Or third, they're just too lazy to learn it. Now, I can't do much about the last reason, but with your help, we can tell more people about this amazing tool that's built into both Excel and Power BI. So please share this video. And for the people too busy to learn it, I'm sure you can spare the next eight minutes to get started with Power Query and start clawing back time today. Power Query is an ETL tool. That is, it extracts, transforms, and loads data. But better than that, it enables you to automate the gathering and cleaning of data because once you create a query, it can be used again and again to gather and clean data with the click of a single button. This means data cleaning and gathering tasks that you used to perform daily, weekly, or monthly can now be done with one click. Power Query can get data from a huge number of sources, including Excel, text and CSV files, web pages, databases, pictures, PDFs, SharePoint and OneDrive, and loads more. To demonstrate, I've got a CSV file here from the Queensland government containing wave measurements taken off the coast where I live. Now I need to clean this data before I can use it in my analysis. So I'm going to close the file down and then on the data tab, the ribbon, over here in the get and transform data group, I've got my Power Query tools. I've got some shortcuts to some common sources and we've got a ton more underneath the get data drop down. I'll leave you to explore them in your own time. I need this one here from text slash CSV. So I'm just going to click on that and navigate to my data. Here it is. And I'll click import. This brings up a preview of the data. We can see it's detected the file origin, the delimiter, and it's detecting the data types for each column based on the first 200 rows. I can go straight ahead and load it to my Excel file or I can click on transform, which is what I want, because that's going to allow me to open the Power Query Editor where I can do some cleaning first. In the Query Editor on the left, we have the list of queries. I've only got one, so I'm going to collapse that. It'll give me a bit more room. In the middle, I've got a preview of my data. Now, it only displays the first 999 rows, and this enables it to be super responsive while you're making transformations and working in the editor. When you load the query, the full data set is loaded, so don't worry about that. And then on the right, we have the query settings pane, which contains the query name, and I can rename it just by typing a new one in and pressing enter. Then we have the applied steps. Now, much like recording a macro, the query editor records the steps that you take to gather and clean the data. We can step back through the steps and see the data at each step. Now notice the date time column contains a T between the date and time. Now, if I open this file in Excel, this is going to be a problem and something that I have to clean, but Power Query automatically detects that this field contains date and time, and it's fixed it for me without me having to do anything. Now there are some columns that I don't need for my analysis, so I'll remove them first, and they are the ID, holding down control. I also want the site number and the seconds, not interested in those, so press delete and be gone. Notice it adds a new step to the applied steps pane. And in the formula bar, you can see it's written the formula for me. So I haven't had to know how to do any of that stuff. Now I also only want the date portion of the date time field. So I'm going to click on the data type drop down and change it to date. And that just gets rid of the time component. Now I can get a feel for the data via the view tab and turning on column distribution. This shows me a profile of the data in each column and how many distinct and unique values there are. And if we scroll across, we can see on the far right here, the current speed and current direction columns look a little odd. Firstly, there's only one speed and one current direction. And if we look at the speed, it's a negative value. So they don't look like they're correct. So I'm going to delete these columns 
all the way up to TP, I'm just holding down shift to select them and then press the delete key. I'm only interested in the max and the HSIG. I also don't need the longitude and latitude, so let's delete those. And we're left with the site, the date, the HSIG and HMAX. This is the significant height. It's based on the top third of wave heights in each interval that's measured. And it's the average of those three. Whereas this is the maximum in any one time period. Now I have multiple records for each day because the reading's done every half hour, but I only want the daily maximum. So we're going to use group by, and that's available on the transform tab, group by. And I want to use advanced. So I'm going to group based on site and date time. And I want the maximum height of significance. And the operation is maximum. You can see there's lots to choose from. And I'm finding the max for HSIG. And we'll do it again for the max height. Again, max. And it's for the HMAX. I'll click OK. And you can see now the data is summarized, so I only have one record for each day for each site. Now lastly, I'm only interested in some of the sites, so let's filter out the ones I don't need. Instead of selecting them all, I just want Cloundra and Malula Bar. And click OK, and there's my data set. Again, notice the Applied Steps pane has loads of steps, and as I go back through them, I can see the data at each point in time. We're ready to close and load. On the home tab of the ribbon, I want close and load two, and this is going to allow me to choose where to load the data. By the way, if you're using Power BI, you'll find the button is called close and apply. So close and load two. You can see I've got a load of options. Now I want to create a pivot table report. So I'm going to choose pivot table report. It's going to add it onto a new worksheet by default. I've already got an empty worksheet. So let's just pop it straight on there. Click OK. And it's loaded a pivot table placeholder and I'm ready to summarize the data. So let's quickly build a pivot table and we'll add a slicer for the site. And I'm just going to group these dates by days. And that's just going to abbreviate the date for me so that when I insert the pivot chart and I'll go with a line chart, the dates just fit in the axis a bit easier. Let me quickly get rid of some of these field buttons and we'll put the legend at the top and that looks a bit better. Okay, so now I can filter the data using the slicer. It's picking up the data that's stored in the pivot cache, which was loaded by Power Query. Now the real power is realized when we have to update this report with new data. So here I have a new CSV file and if we expand this column and we'll just quickly pop a filter on you can see that I now have data that goes right up to the 30th. In my query, I only had data up to the 29th. So this file has more data than my previous one. So let's just save it over the top of the file that's connected to Power Query. So it's this one here. I'm just going to save it and replace it. And we'll close it down. So we can see the data only goes up to the 29th of June. All I need to do now to get the update is go to the data tab of the ribbon and click refresh all and you can see it now includes the 30th of June all I've done is click refresh one button and the query in my file has gone away and repeated all of those steps that I set up to this new file of data and I haven't had to do any more work. I hope you found this tutorial useful and you're excited to get started with Power Query. If you'd like to get your skills up to speed quickly, please check out my course linked to in the video description. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And don't forget to share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.